And I'm happy to invite Amir Borenstein from EHS Israel and no radiation for you. Amir will be talking about RF safety service, measurement techniques, and pitfalls. Please. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, let's see if it works without a wireless remote. Yes. Well, um, safety s s service or uh, service uh, are done usually when someone or some a company invite a tester, a human tester, he comes with his own equipment to the house or to the company or to the building or to the field, and he tests the radiation. He does that uh, according to your requirements, which radiation to test, and according to uh, um, things that are determined by the Ministry of Environment Protection. And it's cost money, not so much. You can order one for your house for less than 1,000 shekels, but what do we get for that? And do we get something that actually reflect our ex exposure or even the real um, real levels of radiation? And before that, let's let's talk about a little bit about what they are used at the end. Sometimes they are used for PR, and this is an example from the uh, Austra Australian uh, provider that shows that 5G will have a total of like a glimpse over the allowed standard, okay? So the allowed standard is for, for other people to understand that are not technical is in percentage. And you see the little blimp here? It's almost nothing. So what you get in mind is it's nothing. Is it true? This is of course a standard that is based on heat, okay? This is another example of it. And they use the, the same terms. They use 100 times below federal limits, which is pretty high by the way. Uh, or level far below the safety standard, or this is from a latest uh, BBC uh, documentary about EHS people, well within guidelines. Very, very uh, common. You can actually go and drink coffee after that because you're calm. And this is an Israeli example. This is a part of the report which is the most important. This is the table of uh, data that we get. Those are the location in which the tests were done. This is an example from uh, inside the school. Uh, they came to test Wi-Fi, okay? And this is the outcome. And you see it's 0.042, you say, oh, that's very low. Um, and then they compare it with percentage out of the ICNIP standard, which is even lower in percentage. It's look better, okay? So now you can drink two coffee because you're very calm. And then there's the final word is, does it uh, uh, go beyond the limits? No, it doesn't. Okay, but what info do we get here? I don't know. One example is, uh, another example is that it's used in court, okay? This is a letter from Stelian to the court when against the, when, uh, during the appeal against Wi-Fi in school, Wi-Fi deployment in school, two, 2014, if I'm not mistaken, no, this is 2015. And he wrote here, the tests show low levels of radiation which are lower than the standard that was defined by the Ministry of Environment Protection. So the court, sorry, the court didn't understand what the standard is, what it's based on, uh, he, but he know that's the standard and it's below the standard, so it's all okay. And this is the basic idea that most people get. They invite a tester or they get the result and they get the idea that it's all okay. But is it? Well, I don't think it's okay, and the, there are two reasons. One of them is the key reason, we have discussed it a lot, it's the, the safety standards are based on heat, and they are not very relevant, at least I think so, it seems like you all, or most of you think the same. Um, they are heat-based, all not relevant, and biologic effect uh, happens in level far below the so-called safety standard. And the heat base, is actually uh, producing an assumption, and the assumption is that the average is more effective than peaks. Of course, if you want to boil a kettle, 
than the average power you invest in the cattle is more relevant than the pigs, but pigs don't, uh, uh, this assumption is wrong. Uh, it's not the heat, dummy. <laughs> okay, it's the pigs. And the secondary reason are technical reason, and we are going to focus on that. And there are far too many technical, uh, technical reasons. Before we do that, I, want, I think that it's, it, we should put a barrier between them, a separator. We should discuss this and debate, but on this, there's no debate. These problems, those problems, are actually the technical reasons or issues uh, are cause, uh, uh, cause, cause the levels to, low, to look lower, okay? And it causes meters, this is, this is far more serious than this, they cause meters to show no radiation when there is a source of radiation next to them. This is obviously wrong. Is that a sample rate? It's lots of issues together, combined. Okay, and this brings us to underestimation. I didn't, I wrote here before, under measurement, but it's not really measurement. In electronics, you can't measure something. You can get so close to the truth, but not, you, you can never see the old truth. So it's an estimation, but we get an underestimation here. And the technical reasons, uh, unlikely the, uh, the debate if there is a biological effect or not, those technical reasons are stuff that they are actually based on technical knowledge and things that 100% of the technical population or, or the community agree. And uh, those issues are against best practice and against the uh, uh, cornerstones of measurement techniques. And we'll show that. So let's go to the pitfalls. And I separate between key issues and contributing issues. I might be mistaken in this separation, but maybe I'm right. First one is detection sensitivity. So in this table here, you can see that the meter, in most cases, it wrote that the amount is smaller than 0.1. Now, when I get a report like that, the first thing I think of, the meter didn't measure anything, okay? The radiation level, th this is in a class with Wi-Fi, okay? And the Wi-Fi was on, and there was load on the Wi-Fi. So if the meter shows less than what is capable to show, then this is not the right meter. It's not sensitive enough, okay? So it didn't cross the minimal threshold? Yes, to exactly. Register anything? You know, so, so it registered here something, but it's so small that you can presume that the, the meter uh, um, um, uh, the, the place that the, the meter is just getting started, mm -hmm. okay? And the bottom line of this issue is that some meters are not sensitive enough to show the radiation and they're showing nothing when there is something, okay? And this is a big, big thing. Showing nothing when there is something meaning that you're doing stuff wrong. Another key issue is the sampling rate. Now, we are going up in the scale in, of understanding those technical issues because understanding the sensitivity is pretty easy. Sampling rate is a little bit more complex. First, we have to talk about duty cycle. Duty cycle is a portion, it's measured in percentage, a portion of a second in which the, the signal is alive. It's on the air, okay? So, uh, you can see here, you can see here that this is a percentage, that this is how the pulses look like, uh, the, the signal looks like, and this is a square wave. And in low duty cycle, you're actually getting pulse in our earth, and I think we talked about it today and yesterday, what pulse does. And this is what we have today. Most of our exposure, 100% duty cycle is like FM, AM, and analog TV. That was cancelled, AM, is, I think it is about to be cancelled, as Stephen said, and FL is still out there. Uh, the mid-duty cycles are DTV and cellular towers at daytime, peak daytime they are 80%, in nighttime they are 20% duty cycle. So if you come and test here, you have a problem. At the night, you have only 20%. And the low, the low are 
uh, Wi-Fi router, cell phones, Wi-Fi devices, deck phones, Bluetooth, most radio frequency uh, radiation emitting devices have very low duty cycle, as low as 2%. Okay? So the bottom line is, most signal sources around us have low duty cycle and pulse in RF. And the sampling rate is the, now let's talk about the sampling rate. It's the number of times the meter measures the radiation in each second, okay? If I measure something twice every second, then my sampling rate is two. If I'm measuring it 1,000 times, I'm 1,000. The sampling rate is 1,000. Um, and first problem is that it's not written in, in the data sheet of most uh, uh, pulse RV meters. And what you can find there is the display rate. How many times the display changes? And it's usually two or five. And the highest simplest meter I've seen has 300 per second in a professional meter. But home use meters have 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 per second, much higher. And this is a drawing I did in paint. Sorry for the resolution. I couldn't find this picture online. So I painted it myself. In purple, you can see uh, the actual signal in pulsing. And in red, you can see the, the samples. This is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the next second. So if you measure only two times a second, you're actually catching maybe in this peak. Maybe. OK? If you, if you sample in a lot of times, then you catch more peaks. More, more of the uh, peaks and more of the signal, actually. OK? Micha Michael here told me one, uh, when we t when discussed this presentation, he told me that in 5G it's going to be even more difficult because a couple of antennas will beam at you. Uh, and the beaming will be not just in the time and frequency domain, they will be only on a geographical domain. Sometimes they will be here, sometimes you'll get something from there and something from, from there. So it's making it even more complex. But the bottom line is that low sampling rate meters can give an underestimation. They actually don't see all the peaks, they don't see all the signals, they don't see all the radiation. If you were to go into a professional lab and use a low sampling rate meter in a professional lab, lab and present this outcome to a supervisor, he will tell you you did it wrong. You have to use a meter that has a couple of gigs of sampling rate a second. And in order to know, we have to do it with a high sampling rate. And it has to be both on the meter side and on the prop side. Third issue is average, average, average uh, vast peaks or max. And that, those are two things that I, I got from a, a website. This is a, a meter, actually from a meter a data sheet, a home use meter. You can see the, the peaks. And you can see this is the max average or the peak average. And this is the ever, uh, so, sorry, this is the peak level, okay, measured. And this is the average. And this is pulsing. This is not pulsing, this is continuous wave. And you can see that the average is a little bit smaller than the peaks. But in pulsing, it's large, it's, it's a mat, uh, it's much, a lot higher than the average. And here you can see it as well. This is uh, lots of peaks. This is not too many peaks, but here it's lots of pulsing uh, RF. And you can see this is the average. And those are, this is the peak level. So it's much higher. So the bottom line is, if we have a meter that is measuring, or a probe that is measuring average, we get an outcome which is not as high as the peaks. So we're missing more information by averaging it. We're actually losing all the peaks. Uh, this is 3.5. Why 3.5? It's exactly the same as the last one, but more complex. Sometimes people bring spectrum analyzer to the field. Spectrum analyzer uh, is not like a meter. A meter show you the changes of radiation level over time. Spectrum analyzer show it against the frequencies in the frequency domain. Okay? So here, this is an example. They brought a spectrum analyzer, which is a very expensive device. This costs like 80,000 uh, shekels. Uh, and they brought it to a school class 
and they try to measure Wi-Fi. Can you see the Wi-Fi? This is the, way, the place where the Wi-Fi should have been. Maybe it's the, this small glimp, okay? And the test was done using the new protocol. We will talk about it in a bit. Uh, they actually put load on the system. And the reason that they didn't saw the Wi-Fi is the sampling rate and the average. The, 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 actually, the, you can see here, the spectrum analyzer worked at, in average mode, as IRCNIP tells you to do, okay? And also the Ministry of Environment Protection tells you to do average. And they opened the big span. Span is like, for example, if you see from here to here, you don't see the details, but if you focus on that, okay, you can see the details. You can invest all the resolution your eyes can see, and you can focus on this, on just on the small frame. So they open the span. The span is actually how big you you, you take a picture of how, how big your view, your frame. Um, they open a big span. This is a big mistake. They should have opened small span over here, just over the expected Wi-Fi uh, frequency, and then they would see something different. Now, this is something I did with my own equipment, which is a home use equipment, a spectrum analyzer. And this is when I use a 100 megahertz span. This is my neighbor Wi-Fi. Absolutely nothing, or close to nothing. Signal is in DBM. Um, in DBM, when it's minus 81, it's lower than minus uh, 20, uh, 47. And this is when I open just four megahertz. Here's the signal. The signal was there, but I didn't see it. Why? Because I was using the spectrum analyzer in the wrong way. So the bottom, and this is another issue about spectrum. Remember, I told you spectrum analyzer is the same as meter, but all the issues of the meter are being, uh, being uh, more radical here. This is also when a picture that shows that this is the max in, in red or brown, and below it you can see the average. The average is always lower than the max. So the bottom line here is even if you use a high sampling rate spectrum analyzer, and they usually are, uh, you can still miss signals, miss them completely, uh, and show a lower uh, level of radiation. Key issue number four, the prop characteristics. Wow, this one is a biggie, and it's difficult. First, what's a prop? This is a prop. This is a meter, handheld meter, a professional meter, but 20 years old. And this is the prop. Both of them are calibrated separately, and they both have characteristics. Some of the probes are analog, just doyards and capacitors, and some actually have processors inside. But we don't know what they do. We just know they are okay. They are, they are built by the IRCNIP or FCC or other standard, IEEE. The data sheet is limited. You have no information about the sampling rate of the probe, no average what it does, no info about what it does, but I assume it does average because it's about, according to IRCNIP standard and they deal with average. And there's another issue here, and it's so important, but complex. So I, I gave it another uh, slide, we'll talk about it. Uh, and there's no indication of the probe characteristic in the test report. So when you get a report, you don't know what the probe was, what it did, and how it did it. You just know the number, model number, and the calibration date. That's all. Oh, I think I removed the, the slide, but I will, ah, no, no, this is the slide. Okay, so most, what, what if I, uh, the probe can handle two or more signal, can it? I don't know if it can. Uh, when you think about it, you think of Carlos's case, it's a probe, it's measure, it's a sensor, it's measuring radiation, whatever the frequency is, it will measure it, even if you give it two frequencies, one, one right to the next, if every one of those frequencies has the, the magnitude of, if the, volt, uh, the, the height of one, for example, then together they will be two. But in real life, probes cannot do that. They cannot, one plus one is not equal to usually, because maybe it has a different, uh, different characteristic in the first, uh, a frequency and a different characteristic in the second frequency and together it can't calculate. And most of our signals today looks like that. This is a Wi-Fi signal and you have channels here of actually 
different frequencies one right, one right next to the other, okay? And, and most of them, this is called the frequency spread or, and, and actually in Wi-Fi they are hoping they are, they, you don't get all of them together, they are, the location is changing very rapidly. So this is another thing that is out to catch. And even if you look at the wider span in the spectrum analyzer, this is a cell tower, 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 this is, it's all frequencies, different signals on the frequency span, right next to the other, and the probe is not measuring all of them at the same way, and it's not measuring, it's not calculating all of them together. So to summarize up until now, we have a sampling rate issue, we have an average issue, we have a wide span issue, and we have the multi-frequency issue. And all of them together, okay, thank you. All of them together show, uh, uh, actually tells us that measuring a low duty cycle signal with low sampling rate meter, working on average mode, will result in low levels or low estimation. Another two, con or two issues, well, the first one is a test protocol. Well, the p test protocol used to be like this. You have to measure it one meter high. You can't measure below or higher. You have to stay away from windows and, and, and uh, walls, one meter away from them. Um, you have, uh, usually people come and measure one point in the room or two points in the room and leave. And you have to average over one or six minutes and you have, you're using low sampling, meter, uh, sampling rate meters, and the out, outcome are usually compared to evening standard as we saw be before. So this is a problem, I've criticized this a lot, including a letter to the court, uh, together with Ram Dishon, engineer Ram Dishon. And in 2007, Stigan called me to his office and we discussed this. And the result was an improved, actually it was by emails, but the, the, and he sent a team to to my house and we did some experiment, but the result was that out of the 10 points I raised to fix in the, the protocol, uh, included four, point, four new points. And this new standard is relevant only in schools, not in your house, not in your factory. Um, you, you are supposed to use max hold, but with low sampling rate meters. You can test multi points uh, in the classroom usually uh, next to people that use the laptops, and you have to load the Wi-Fi routers. There were more, more issues that I raised, but th th they were not answered. And there is this part of the new that, uh, protocol that tells you if the levels are high, if you get a high result, because you, said you did things more correctly, then average them, <laughs> okay? So everything will be okay. A and this is, we'll get to that. I think the bottom line is that the current test protocol can contribute to over low, low level outcomes. And now let's talk about calibration. And calibration is done by uh, standards, uh, again, uh, but according uh, or next to or opposed to a generated signal, not a real, not a real signal. The duty cycle is 100%. Uh, so if you have a low probe or a low meter, it will be, still be okay. But if you bring it to real life, it will not be okay. There's one source, one sig signal at a time, okay? Those are the different frequencies that are tested, but only one at a time. And it's compared to a better calibrated meter, okay? And this is real life. This is a classroom with a Wi-Fi router full of devices, and you get many real life signals. You get many sources with low duty cycle. You get many signals that call Stein domain, frequency domain, and across the room, around you, okay? Both, all of them influence in the meter. And it's almost impossible to isolate one. If you want to do it correctly, you should try and measure each and every one of them and then do it together and then do the calculation. And the additional thing is that I, I think that instead of comparing to a, a better calibrated meter, you should have calculate. You know all the characteristics of the antenna, of the uh, transmitter that you have, you should, and you know where you put the meter and the probe, you should calculate how much radiation you should get in this point. And if your meter and probe do not, do, do not show that level, you should adjust them to show that level. But no, you put another meter, you see what it shows, and then you calibrate according to that. 
So the, the bottom line here is the calibration doesn't generally, uh, doesn't guarantee accuracy in real life. And even if a meter is calibrated, it can still miss or give low levels in real life condition. Now this is a picture I've, I've taken couple, this is a slide I've taken the picture a couple of days ago in Maya's house. Uh, this is a meter, that, one of the best that I know. It's an old one, but it's measuring three, 300 times a uh, second, and it shows 0, 0.00. It shows nothing. There, here there's, there's a deck phone. You know what a deck phone? It's a cordless phone. And those are two home use meters, and they are measuring 0 0.8. So here we have an outcome. This is actually, even if it shows 0 0.23, the noise level of or the, the bottom, the, the, the lowest possible measurement it can see is 0 0.2. So it's actually sensing something, but it can't, it's in, on the lower uh, side of its abilities. Uh, here they are measuring something, and here you are measuring nothing, but the radiation still exists. So you're missing everything, and the, and the error here is, is one, not, it's 100% error, okay? Uh, missing info for the data sheet. Oh, this is for engineers, this is the issue. Okay, the um, Okay, data sheet is a document that you're supposed to write everything that your product or a chip or whatever you, you develop supposed to be doing. You should write it inside, how it does it, and how it can be used. And you can write anything inside, but it has to be true. Okay, you can write that your device doesn't do anything and that you are asking $5 for it, it's okay. But if you write that it does something and it doesn't, that's wrong. And that's so wrong. And this is part I didn't want to bring all the data sheet because it's too much information and also you will know the meter, which meter, this is for professional meter. The only thing that is relevant to the, to the, to the due second sample rate is that the refresh rate is five hertz, five times a minute, a uh, second. This is another example. Refresh rate, uh, display refresh rate is typically 400 millisecond. And this is another example from a home use meter. The, ref the refresh rate is uh, five microseconds, meaning that it can detect a five microsecond. Okay, this is like 200,000 uh, uh, samples per second. And this is another example. It tells you exactly what it does. It measures every 1.1 second. It takes 384 values, and it shows you the peak. And this is another example. So the bottom line here is that most important info, the sampling rate, is omitted or sometimes missing from the poor servimeters. Now to summarize things up, how can we make it better? We can use uh, meters with high sampling rate, and we can make sure that the info about the sampling rate is written in the data sheet of the meter of and the pop. Uh, we can, the, the data sheet should include the all explanation about how the probe and meter do their job. Okay, so we will explain what we are seeing. Uh, the above info should appear also in some way in the test, in the test report. So people would, then, would see what, what has been done, how the measurements were taken. Uh, we should use only fast meters that show peak or max hold values. Uh, if spectrum scans uh, are used, uh, they should be on a narrow signal uh, span, on, an, on a small span, and then do, do all bits and of just small spans of the spectrum and then combine them together. Um, and we should do the calibration process in a more uh, realistic way. And of course, remove the test procedure. Now, the test main goal, I think, the, we talked about it yesterday, I talked about requirements. So I think the requirements of the test is, should be uh, changed from showing that the level are within standards to find the source, find the penetration points, find ways to reduce exposure, and show the RF levels with no filters, because average is a filter, okay? Like you put on a picture. Using a, small, a, a low sampling rate meter is like a low pass filter. Uh, on, a, on a pulsing, it's like low pass filter. You actually hide information. And, and this is, can be done as much as possible. You will always have gaps. And a new protocol is needed. And later, yesterday I talked with, uh, with Stylian, and there might be a new protocol. We have to discuss it and it will be restricted to EHS people, okay? So, 
Thank you very much. I would like to thank also uh, Ram Dishon who reviewed this, this uh, presentation and also uh, uh, Michael Peleg who helped that. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Paul Benishai for letting me speak. Amir, thank you very much for excellent biohacking and for showing us all that science is not the exclusive domain of university professors or experts. Uh, if we average our height and weight, I'd feel better about myself. <laughs> and take one or two short questions. So, um, yeah, yeah. On, on the question of calibration. On the question of calibration, which is certainly an important point in any meter, um, normally in a laboratory situation, if we'd want to calibrate, we'd want to calibrate against an absolute standard. Uh, so maybe calibration could be done um, against absolute standards where you know precisely what the signal is that is being put out. You know precisely what it should be at that distance. And uh, maybe it's a, a point of how do we make proper calibration standards for home test meters? That's exactly what that that's exactly matches my opinion. You know all the information about your device or your setup. You know how much radiation you should get in this specific signal, its specific place, and you should. If if your meter doesn't show that, it's not calibrated. You should calibrate according to that. That's a very important. Thank you for emphasizing that again. Another question, please. I thought it was on. Um, all the me uh, meters that we use or study about are the professional ones, which use a low sampling rate and average. Um, Why? What, what is the reason? The reason is IRCNIP. IRCNIP sets the standard for how to build a meter, and they set a standard that it should output average. That's all. And, and there are a couple of engineers in Israel that are very highly uh, regarded and they are very prestige and they are following this recommendation. It's actually a recommendation. And uh, that's what is taught, that only the average counts. You can see pulses, <laughs> so it doesn't mean anything. Uh, they have no biological effect, only heat. It's almost as crazy as the SAR. It, it's it's actually rating. It's on a level that it is too mufrach. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. It's absurd that as an electrician and an electronic mm -hmm. personnel, I couldn't believe it at first sight. It took me a couple of years to understand that this is actually what's going to happen, what's going in the field. Thank you. Thank you very much.